Good morning, church. Today I want to take you to Mark chapter 9, a really interesting passage. Beginning in verse 1, it says, And he said to them, this is Jesus talking, Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. This is an amazing passage. Of course, it's confusing. We're wondering why does Jesus bring Peter, James, and John? Why does Jesus talk to Moses and Elijah? Well, we should remember that this is Jesus making his final march to Jerusalem, where he's going to be crucified. I think, and there's no place in the New Testament that actually gives us this explicitly, but I think Jesus really wanted some time with his closest friends. And so he took Peter, James, and John with him because they needed to see the kingdom of God a little bit more in power than they had seen before. And Jesus is speaking with Moses and Elijah, two guys who had very intimate experience with Jesus himself uh, in the Old Testament days, and also two guys who had intimate experience with death. Elijah never died. He levitated off the planet. Moses did die and was buried, but they each have a unique experience that they can bring to Jesus. And we also know from the Old Testament that they were both very close in their relationship with God. So we don't know exactly why this happened, but we do know what happened next. Peter said to Jesus, verse 5, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let's put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. He was so frightened. <laughs> this is amazing to me because Peter has absolutely no clue what's going on. We don't really have a clue what's going on, but Peter says the first thing that comes to his mind, and the first thing that comes to his mind is to build shelters. Now, we don't know from the passage, maybe it was raining, maybe it was a hot day, I don't know exactly what's going on, but this is interesting because of two things. One, Peter uses the same word for shelter that is translating the Hebrew word tabernacle in the Old Testament. In the Greek version of the Old Testament, the word for tabernacle was translated using the same word that Peter uses here that we translate shelter. So we could have translated it shelter or, or we could translate it shrine or tabernacle or even just tent. Why does Peter mention this word with that word? Maybe Peter is thinking, hey, we need to commemorate this situation. Hey, we need to make this into a, a religious moment, a spiritual moment. And so we need tabernacles. We need three little shrines. I, my idea is that maybe Peter was planning to keep Jesus there on the mountain, and then he was going to run down the mountain and start selling tickets. Hey, everybody, we've got Moses and Elijah and Jesus all up in shrines. Come on up here and let's, let's sell some tickets. Let's, let's make some money off of this thing. I don't really know that for certain. But there is another interesting factor. Peter wanted three individual shrines or shelters or tents, whatever they were. Here's Jesus obviously having a conversation with these two other guys. And Peter wants to build three independent shrines. Now, again, we don't know the whole story. But we do know the first thing that came, that came to Peter's mind is to commemorate this event, memorialize this event, make something permanent from this event. That's really our temptation too. When God does something cool in our lives, we often want to make it permanent. We like taking the good parts of our past and hanging on to them into the future. But look what happens next. Verse 7, then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. And suddenly when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. 
Here's the amazing thing. Peter is talking. He's like, oh, let's commemorate this moment. Let's build some shelters. And immediately a voice comes and says, this is my son. Listen to him. And right after the voice speaks, Elijah and Moses are gone. So what is Jesus' next words? As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. Jesus' immediate words are, don't tell anyone. Peter wants to commemorate this. Peter wants to build shrines. Peter wants to build some sort of permanent structure to keep this moment for longer. And Jesus says, no, 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 don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone what happens until after I've risen from the dead. It's almost as if Jesus is saying, we're not going to remember this moment at all until after I have risen from the dead. See, we people focus on the past. We focus on the good times of the past, and we want to hang on to them. We want to linger with them. We want to keep them with us. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. We're not going to hang on to the past. We are going to do something for the future. And for Jesus, that meant going to the cross, and that meant dying, and that meant rising again. And Jesus explicitly says, we're not going to remember this moment until after we can remember that moment. See, for Jesus, there's only one thing that needs to be commemorated. It's his death and it's his resurrection. In a couple weeks, we're gonna celebrate Easter and we're gonna celebrate Easter in the weirdest possible way, where we are going to be in our own different homes and we're gonna be gathering together by technology. But Jesus says there's only one thing that's worth remembering. It's his death and his resurrection. And for Peter, it hadn't happened yet. And so Peter shouldn't commemorate anything else. But for you and me, it has. In fact, the only ceremony Jesus ever gave to ask us to commemorate him is communion. This next Sunday as a church, we get to celebrate communion together in our own separate homes, Later on this week, we're going to give you a recipe for making some unleavened bread in your home. And uh, then we're going to celebrate communion together on Sunday. It's going to be an interesting way to do it. But I just want to remind you of this. As human beings, we love to take the good parts of the past and hang on to them. We love to take the bad parts of our past and dwell on them. And Jesus says, no, there's one thing to commemorate his death, and his resurrection. Everything else, even Jesus being transfigured on a mountain and talking with Moses and Elijah, everything else pales in comparison. Let me encourage you. If you're hanging on to the past, make sure there's only one thing you're hanging on to. That's Jesus, his death, his resurrection, and what it means for